Welcome everybody, this is Frank Tamar with The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. Let's get right into the news today because it is coming faster and faster almost every single day. There's so much to report on, it's almost impossible to give you all the news. And what I'm going to be doing today is giving you a lot of the news, but I'm going to leave a lot of the news up to you to be able to go to my website, which you'll see here, BibleProphecyMan.com and be able to click to the rest of the links of the rest of the news that I won't be able to cover today. But let me get going here because of time constraints. And the first prophecy I want to talk about is the prophecy that the Lord Jesus showed us that our generation would be known as the drug generation. And I'm going to give you the scripture right here. It's in Revelation chapter 9, verse 21. And this scripture talks about the magic arcs arts and uh, what it is when you study in the Greek it's pharmakeia which is drugs pharmaceuticals drugs and uh, it's significant because it's the use of medicine drugs spells and such as those used in witchcraft witchcraft and those used today by those who are seeking a greater high and we know uh, at least we know the people who read and uh, are keeping track of events that are going on in the world today that our generation has been labeled the drug generation just like Jesus said. Now one of the headlines that I wanted to bring to your attention today is in called Embedded in Chicago we have uh, to operate like we're on the border. It says because of Chicago's location in the heart of the United States its large Mexican population and its abundance of street gang activity drug cartels are designated or designated the city as one of its main hubs of operation in America now those of you who may not have been following the news Mexico is in the heart of one of the worst drug uh, problems in the world the cartels down there are like uh, I mean they're very very brutal uh, thousands and thousands of uh, Mexicans uh, are killed there each year. As a matter of fact, they have more uh, killed in Mexico because of the drug problems than they do uh, in the uh, Afghanistan war. So this is just one of the articles showing us that this problem is huge and it's an uh, ongoing problem. Now moving on to another prophecy the Lord Jesus told us in the last days when they shall call peace and safety sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but ye brother are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief so this is a prophecy that tells us that when we're hearing the call for peace and safety we know that there's going to be war destruction the second part that we'll see right here in the scripture that Paul gives to us and of course we know from scripture that Jerusalem is going to be a major problem during the last days we see this in Zechariah Zechariah chapter 12 verses 2 through 3 it says this behold I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto the people around about and when they shall be in the siege both against Judea and against Jerusalem and in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone, which it already has. That's been fulfilled for all people. And all the people around the world are starting to focus on the lack of the Middle East peace talks, the lack of peace and the killing. And uh, it's surrounding this holy city of Jerusalem, just like the Lord Jesus Christ said. Going on with the prophecy, all that burden themselves with it, and of course he's talking about Jerusalem it says shall be cut into pieces though all the people of the earth are gathered against it so we're getting very very close for uh, Israel's losing their allies year after year uh, their close allies are, have dropped off <clears throat> and uh, many of them have already become uh, enemies like uh, Egypt and uh, Jordan and Syria and I mean Turkey was a major ally and they're, now they're a bitter enemy so that part of the prophecy is being fulfilled now the reason why I gave you this is because I want to focus on what's happening 
over Jerusalem and the peace talks and that's why I put both of these prophecies together today so I'm not sure if you're watching the news or not but Marsai the new president of Egypt is in the United Nations or in New York speaking at the United Nations in the headline Marcy to UN end Israel occupation now I'm not going to read this whole thing but I'm going to center as you can see in the yellow on the, the important issues here because Marcy was talking about ending the Palestinian uh, uh, if you will, the, a lot of people called it apartheid, Israel's you know, apartheid against the Palestinians. And so he was calling for an end of this occupation. And he wants to, when you take a look at this, it says the Palestinian state within all the occupied territories. In other words, all the territory that was taken in the previous war, Marcy wants to give it back to the Palestinians and of course that deals with this area right here in Jerusalem the Temple Mount which is in Jerusalem this is what he's talking about so we see that he is definitely burdening himself over this uh, same area that the Lord warned you better not be doing this so it goes on to talk about he wants to change this the situation, the current situation, the settlements, and change the identity of occupied Jerusalem. In other words, he wants to kick out the Pele the uh, Israelis and give it over to the Palestinians. And this is one of the hang-ups, the hang-up, uh, the major hang-up that caused the peace process uh, to halt. And of course now we have a Muslim Brotherhood uh, leader in Egypt and uh, he's calling for the same things that the Lord said watch out because as you could read the scriptures he says he shall cut you into pieces here anybody that deals or burden themselves over the city which he is and you'll find out that he's gonna have to pay a price for this <clears throat> and of course if you know Psalm 83 you'll know that that price uh, will be dealt at the Psalm 83 war now look at this it says the world should resolve the Palestinian issue first a Palestinian state must be built with here you go Jerusalem as its capital so I'm not sure what it would take for you to understand what the Lord showed you about this the cup of trembling over Jerusalem and the problem of Jerusalem but when you see it in the news specifically I mean very very specific detailed prophecy and you see it happening just the way God said I don't understand why you would uh, be continue to be uh, blinded by the truth here's another headline <clears throat> headline that says a three-star general Muslim Brotherhood has infiltrated Department of Defense this is unbelievable stuff. Now, the he's one of the he is primary leader of the Egypt now Muslim Brotherhood. They call for the destruction of Israel, uh, and of course we know that that uh, he although he calls and he wants to make gestures of peace in his uh, his background as Muslim Brotherhood calls for the destruction of Israel and so this three-star generals talking now reverting to the United States and uh, saying that the United States has been infiltrated into Barack Obama's government and I believe that Barack Obama is uh, actually installing these people in here but you this is a must let me go to this and I want you to listen to what he says because this is really important if you're an American especially when the votes are coming up do you still believe there's a significant infiltration risk in our own government oh listen our government is so infiltrated and the Muslim Brotherhood in America has so much influence in this country it is incredible if, if Americans only took the time to do the proper research and find out just how deep this infiltration into our government is, it would it would just frighten you. I just gave a talk on this last weekend to some folks here in Washington, and they walked away saying, why don't we know this? And my answer is because it is not in the interest of the mainstream media's uh, agenda to tell you. 
I know we don't have as much time as you had last weekend, but uh, real quickly, a bullet point or two, how deep does this go? Well, it goes very deep. We have uh, within, let's just say, the uh, Department of Homeland Security, uh, two of the top people there with uh, very high-level security clearances are known to be associated with the Muslim Brotherhood. The Republican and Democratic parties are both infiltrated. Uh, every government entity, to include the Department of Defense, have uh, people that are known to have had associations with the Muslim Brotherhood. And, you know, Michelle Bachman recently raised the issue of uh, Huma Abedin, which is uh, Hillary Clinton's closest aide, and her parents' association with the Muslim Brotherhood. And, of course, she got uh, she just got uh, blistered by her own party as well as the mainstream media, so it's, it's bad. The last uh, policy issue related to the strength of the military right now, and that you mentioned sequestration a moment ago, uh, $500 billion in program cuts, another $500 billion on the chopping block through sequestration due to the failure of the super committee following the debt ceiling deal of last summer. Uh, you've painted a, a little bit of a picture on what that would look like in terms of not being able to replace worn-out equipment. What else would that mean for our readiness? Well, it uh, reduces the... Uh all the services are reduced, the Navy in particular, uh, down to uh, World War I levels at a time when uh, freedom of navigation uh, in, because of the global economy and free trade uh, is very important for America to maintain a very robust Navy as well as uh, you know land capabilities. But there are other things in there. We're going to shift our focus to the Pacific Rim. Well, let me just tell you up front, uh, I will prophesy here. We're going to wind up back in the Middle East and be unprepared for it because we always get back to the Middle East for two reasons, Israel and oil. Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, now Executive Vice President at the Family Research Council. I'm Greg Columbus of Radio America reporting. So there you have it. Now, very interesting. He says, I'm going to prophesy to you because when you look at, let me scroll down here a little bit. When you look at, there's the wars that, haven't been fought yet when the Lord Jesus in the Old Testament we see uh, God telling us about these wars the Psalm 83 war and then you'll have the Ezekiel war and in this Ezekiel war when you read chapter 38 and 39 of Ezekiel you'll see that it says the young lions of Tarshish are there and all they do is give a formal protest and when I mean are there they're in the theater when this attack happens by all of these Muslim nations and so we know that the United States is going to be there they're the young lions the break off of Tarshish which is Great Britain which the signia of Great Britain is the lion and uh, we know that they're not going to have enough forces they're not going to be able to uh, to strike at the millions of people that will be pouring down against Israel and uh, the second war that will follow the Psalm 83 war. And so when I give you a bunch of news about the Iranians and what's taking place and how the Muslim Brotherhood is infiltrating, all of these uh, this news is pointing to what's going to happen. Now Barack Obama is in charge of the United States. So here's a question you should ask. Why is it that he has Muslim Brotherhood installed in our government, in our defense department? when these people want and they call for the destruction of the United States and Israel. Now the general said that the United, the, he's going to prophesy about the, the, uh, the Middle East, that we're going to be there and the Israel and that's exactly uh, what the scriptures show us. So what he is saying is running parallel with the, with the prophecies. And uh, really interesting, uh, hoping that you're paying attention to what's happening here because America is being sold down the river by a Muslim Brotherhood associate. And uh, obviously, if you're, uh, you're going to be voting, you better really consider what's happening with the United States because the United States is, has been in a bowl of water. Barack Obama has turned up the heat. And the people in the bowl are just like the frog. They can't feel it until it's too late. And uh, that's what's happening here. Now, just to show you, it says the headline, New York allows anti-Semitic pro-Islamic parade to take place. Well, when you go back to the scripture, we know that everybody is going to come against Israel in the last days, right? 
we also know that Jerusalem is going to be a couple of trembling, a burdensome stone. And here we have these people, they are allowed to come in and give hateful uh, uh, speeches about the United States. Now watch this because this really floored me, even to allow these people to get up and, and say these things. And uh, bad news for America. Tom Trento with the United West on Sunday, September 23rd, 2012, Midtown Manhattan at the Muslim Parade. And we're going to show you a whole bunch of stuff about the parade at some point, but right now we got to draw attention to two breaking news. During the, uh, the uh, presentations at the end of the parade, where the dignitaries got up and spoke, several jihadi individuals spoke. One in particular was an imam from Brooklyn who condemned the United States and called for blasphemy laws to be written by the United Nations, by the United States, and by President Obama against anyone who blasphemed the prophet. The freedom of speech and freedom of rights of other stars. So I would like to demand the United Nations to make an international law that would criminalize blasphemy. I again demand to the United Nations on this platform, please make an international law for the, pro for the protection of honor of all your prophet. Following that individual was a very articulate English woman who gave sort of a rap poetic presentation about the horror of the United States and the need for the Ummah, the Muslim family, to stand up against the United States as they insult the Prophet. We carry unborn martyrs in our homes and drop bombs in hay because all that we blow up is mines and money for fuels. They resonate in refugee camps that are housed by Zionist Nazis. Well, that was too much for one of the marshals of the parade, State Senator Tony Avello. He was asked to be a marshal. He marched with the Muslims down Madison Avenue about 10 blocks. He sat on the stage. He was ready at some point to speak after these two jihadis, the Imam from Brooklyn and the articulate English woman, condemned the United States. He had enough. He got up off the stage, left in protest, left in disgust. I tried to catch up with him. We got a few words from him. What did you think of that? Thank you. What did you think of that? I was offended. <laughs> what is your name? Tony Avella. Uh, you're you're with um, the city. I'm a state senator. A state senator. What, what offended you? I'm not going to get into it. No, we we saw you up there, very upset. You want to share it? No, thanks. Okay. I don't want to ruin the event. State Senator Tony Avello deserves to be commended for recognizing the horror of this presentation, the horror of this Muslim Day Parade. And again, he is a hero to all Americans for walking off that stage. God bless you, Tony Avello. I have a different opinion of what he just said there because I don't believe that he's a hero at all. I believe that he started to become a hero by walking off, but when asked in this by this person who's reporting this, he should have told him why he got off. And I think that he, uh, he was lack in that. I believe that he didn't want to cause any problems. Like he said, he wanted not to disturb it. But for anyone who is standing behind somebody who was given hatred and, and talking about bombs and blowing up and, uh, and doing harm, People need to speak out against this thing. He's a Democrat senator and just his own party leader. Barack Obama the other day stated that we have to be uh, tolerant or, in, you know, we have to shun this hatred. We have to be more like Gandhi. Uh, we have to be tolerant, but not tolerant of people who call for murder and people who call for bombings and so forth. So I believe that this this uh, senator should have said exactly what he believed instead of just walking off and not saying anything. He, it would have been much more impact 
if he would have said that he did not believe in the Muslim Brotherhood's ideology. He didn't believe in the violence that they were saying, but he said nothing about that. He just walked off, and I believe that uh, he could have used that platform like the these uh, hatred people used at this Muslim parade. So now let me give you where we're talking about Muslims and we're talking about uh, the elections coming up and there is uh, something that really is disturbing to me. We know that the Lord Jesus told us in the last days there was going to be people who claimed that they were Jesus Christ. We see this in the scripture here in Matthew chapter 24. But there is a website that uh, portrays, you see it's the blasphemy website, asked the question, is Barack Obama the Messiah? Well, looking, if you were a Muslim, looking in of what Barack Obama is doing, you would really think that, yes, this man is going to be our savior. I mean, obviously, if he's installing Muslim Brotherhood people in the United States Department of Defense and places of high ranking, there's some serious questions people ought to be asking about what in the heck is going on in the United States. I mean, obviously, Barack Obama is, by his actions, clearly shows that he is not a Christian man, but he's definitely wavering on the side, the balanced side of the uh, Islamic side, or the Muslims. So let me take you right to this and show you what this website looks like there's a lot to it and uh, I just want to tell you right now Barack Obama is not the Messiah he is not the Messiah if anything he he has he's pointing to the four type of the Antichrist of what's going on here it is really sick when you scroll down you'll see a lot of these things and they're portraying him as look at this Obama the transfiguration and you notice here, even this this article in this uh, in this blog here, it talks about uh, here's Soros, George Soros, who wants to call for a one world government. This man right here is one of the main people calling for a one world government. And then they have Barack Obama's like the Transfiguration. Now, for those of you who may not have read the Bible, the Transfiguration is when Jesus came down to some of the apostles and they showed him the the greatness of what he was looking like in heaven there was the transfiguration and now they're putting him on a pedestal like the transfiguration like this is jesus christ come to save us which is totally ridiculous and here's when you scroll down obama is god i mean this is this is definitely blasphemous and uh, there's other You'll see here. Now look at this. They put him in a in a photo here with John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Like this, Obama is Christ. Uh, look at if you know scriptures, you know exactly how the true Messiah is coming back. He's going to be coming back at the end of the tribulation period when he restores and goes into Jerusalem and rules in Jerusalem. And what we see here is the forerunning of Antichrist. And not to say that he is the Antichrist, but he's certainly doing things that uh, what a, a forerunner like Antonius Epiphanes was a forerunner of the Antichrist. And people have uh, who do not know the Lord, obviously, are looking to this man as a messiah so I'll let you go there you can read a lot there's videos here uh, look at this God of all things it's just it's it's blasphemous is what it is and uh, if anyone was a real Christian and they they came out and said that uh, he was God what does the Bible say well the Bible says just like when uh, when when somebody says that you're God, you're supposed to rebuke them and tell them exactly what it is. Like Paul, for example, they they treated him like a god, and he you know he tore his clothes. He said, "No, I'm not." A, I'm, he rebuked that, 
And of course, we don't see anything like this. I mean, he's eating, Barack Obama's probably eating this up. But uh, the best thing that anybody can do uh, for America, especially if you have signs of Muslim Brotherhood coming into the U.S. government, is to vote against this man. Let me go back to my site. There you go. <clears throat> Just take a second to load. Now we're going to get back in. I want you to, to see, because uh, I've been warning over the years that the, the enemies of Israel that are trying to get back Jerusalem, they're not going to stop firing the rockets in. And, of course, we know that these incidences will eventually cause the Psalm 83 war. And this weekend again, yesterday, Yom Kippur, one of the holidays, the Jewish holidays, here we go again, another rocket from Syria pours in on, uh, in Israel. And so uh, these are just, they may look like small skirmishes, but they really, they're becoming more intense. And it just seems like the whole world is about ready to cave in. And, of course, this is one of the signs when the Lord said, when you shall see all these things that are happening, know that it's near even at the door. So not only is when you see Syria's involved in the, the Psalm 83 war here, uh, events that will lead to uh, not only the Psalm 83 war, but the Ezekiel war, of which you'll see the map here that I explained a little bit earlier. Now, in regards to Ezekiel chapter 38, Benjamin Netanyahu is coming to New York, and he's going to be addressing, and guess what? He's going to be addressing what's taken place with, the, uh, with his nation and how that the, uh, the Jews under the Iranian dictator have been calling for uh, the, the disappearance, as you see here, here the disappearance of Israel. And uh, if you can, please watch the news tonight. He's going to be speaking today. And he's going to be talking about what uh, he believes he's going to have to do, drawing the red lines, if you will. Now, uh, let me just read this very briefly. It says, and there's other, uh, other uh, articles about this, but I wanted to post this. Dear Israel citizens, he wrote, I'm taking off tonight to New York to represent the state of Israel and the UN podium. And then the question of Iran, because again, Iran is calling for the destruction of uh, Israel. And we are all united in the goal of preventing Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons. On the day that we pray to be inscribed in the Book of Life, the podium was given to the dictatorial regime in Iran that takes every opportunity to sentence us to death. Now, let me stop it right there and ask you another question. President Barack Hussein Obama, he is supposed to protect Israel. He's supposed to protect the United States. He knows that he is called, this man from Iraq, or Iran, Ahmadinejad, has called for the destruction of the United States and the, the destruction of um, Israel. So the question is, why is, there you go, why is it that we are now hearing this news about uh, these Muslim brotherhoods uh, installing in our government, and why are we even hearing that this Ahmadinejad was even allowed to come into the United States of America? I'll tell you right now, if I was president of the United States and somebody was saying the things that Ahmadinejad was saying about the United States, I would make it known to that man before he stepped on my, on my nation that you will be arrested for what you, what you are saying. And of course, not only did Barack Obama's government allow him in here, he allowed him to spit off uh, about Israel. And about not only about Israel, the destruction about Israel, but he's talking about bringing his iman, the the Islamic savior. And you're going to read more about this uh, in my in my post when you get there. But here we go. We know that the 
the events that are taking place today are events that the Lord told us about. We knew, we know beforehand because it wasn't surprise. The Lord gave us specific instructions. Now Iran, as you see here, is coming in this attack. They will be coming against Israel uh, during this Ezekiel chapter 38 war. So the, the events that you're seeing are very significant because it's leading to those wars. Now again, the Psalm 83 war, the Ezekiel war. Now the Psalm 83 war, as I said previously, Syria is involved in that war, as well as the rest of these. Of course, you have the Palestinians. You've got Marcy, Egypt there, which I showed you earlier today. And now we just found out that uh, Iran is sending these special troops, these Al-Quad brigades, special forces, that are going into Syria. All right? So according to this news article that when you click here, you'll be able to get it, but it says that they have between 50 to 60,000 professional uh, these soldiers. And of course, they're arming these soldiers. And what do you think is going to happen? The Prime Minister of Israel knows, he knows that he's going to have to do something with Iran. And so what's going to happen, one of the scenarios, as I've given to you before, the United the Israel will have to attack Iran over here, and then there will be a retaliation uh, by these nations that are listed from 1 through 10 that border Israel. And, of course, Syria is going to be among those, and you're going to have a proxy Iran in this war because, as you see right here, they have, they're bringing in 50 to 60,000 of these professional warriors into Syria. Now, when that happens, if the United, if Israel attacks Syria, of course, you're going to have, not only are you going to have these elite forces that have been shipped in from Iran, but you're going to have the rest of these allies that are calling for the destruction of Israel join in on the forces and you will have the first prophecy fulfilled. You'll have the Psalm 83 war and that's definitely going to set up this next war where all of these nations will not take part in it but these nations will and there you'll see the difference as they're listed. Of course all this information is in my book in detail but these troops are very significant uh, moving into Syria. And here we have, again, we have the president or the, uh, the prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, he's talking about the, the red lines of what, what's going to happen and how he's going to have, they're going to have to do something. You'll see it right here. Netanyahu aids PM to set Iran red lines. In other words, the day of reckoning is coming. It is definitely coming. The United States is not going to do anything for for the Prime Minister of Israel. He does not have the Israel's back. He can speak all he wants, but his actions speak louder uh, than his mouth. And so this is really dangerous territory for the United States of America when he goes and does the opposite of what he says he's going to do for his supposedly friends of Israel. And of course this is a news article that uh, you really should read because it says, Ahmadinejad end time speech to the UN gives most details explanation of the 12th Imam to the date and tells UN leaders Mahadi will soon reign over the world. This man, I, you know, I, I don't know for sure, but I would say this 99% sure that this man right here is the man that Jesus, or in the Old Testament, that God shows us that will be coming from Iran to attack Israel. This man right here has called for the destruction of the nation of Israel constantly for the last five years. This man has claimed that he is the man who's going to bring out the 12th Imam. And so he believes, and you, when you read my book, uh, you'll, you'll see that this man believes that he was born to bring on chaos to bring in the Islamic Savior really interesting and so all I could tell you at this point is 
Watch what he does because he is fulfilling prophecy. He's saying the same things that the Lord told us that they would be saying about the destruction of Israel. He's burdened themselves over Jerusalem. And, uh, of course, he's going to have to pay a hefty price because we, we know when you read Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 that all of these enemies who pour down on Israel are going to be wiped out. Five-sixths of the entire armies will be destroyed and they will be destroyed by God to show that uh, he's sanctifying his name. He tells us that in this prophecy sanctifies his name to show him that Israel will not be wiped off the face of the earth like this man is saying and like obviously uh, Russia is going to be involved in this war. They will actually lead the war in with Iran and Turkey and the rest of these nations. So we're coming down to it, people. We're getting really, really close. Now, this 12th Imman actually is the, you know, would be the Antichrist figure, not the, not the Messiah. He'd be the exact opposite. And so moving on to some other prophecies here, the Lord also told us, and keep in mind, when he said, when you shall see all of these things, know that it's near, even at the door. And so we see this, for example, Luke 21, 25, the major storms that he's talking about in the last days. And of course, I'm giving you headline after headline to show you what's taken place. And please go to those links, click the links, and you'll be able to read all about those. Massive storms, droughts, you'll see just about everything that the Lord is talking about major droughts and how it's affecting uh, in this one case 301 million trees have died in texas texas is under a major drought and obviously this isn't comes to a surprise from anyone who reads bible prophecy that's for sure and of course pestilence the lord talked about pestilence will become you know you can pestilence disease pestilence from pests the insects and I put some information up for you for this. And then we get into increased violence and civil unrest. And uh, we're seeing a lot of that, especially coming from now. We're starting to see in Europe because Europe is falling apart. And of course, we know from Scripture that uh, in Daniel chapter 2, it says that this uh, they would, these nations would not cleave together, It'd be like iron and clay. And uh, obviously that's what's taking place right here. And I'll give you some information about that as well. What's going on in Europe with the Greek protest. You'll be able to scroll down because we believe that uh, obviously this is how the road to the Antichrist is actually being paved. We know that the Antichrist is coming. We see one of the ways that he is coming is a economic collapse. He'll be able to take the control and uh, as the economy collapses worldwide we see the scripture tells us that this man is going to be able to control what you buy or sell so in order for that to happen there has to be a burning up of the world uh, economic system and of course all the news is pointing to massive massive debts by not just the united states but other countries that are leading to this collapse so there you go. I'm gonna. There's a lot of news in the news today, which man, I'll tell you, I'd have to have a two-hour program every single day to give you all the the news. And of course, in these last days, you're noticing if you're watching, there's been a lot of persecution against the Christians, against those that love Jesus Christ. And here's another one of those stories. Jesus not allowed anti-faith sentiment sweeps U.S. More information about that. So. I, again, I'm just I'm doing what I can to keep you informed about these last days. You know, if you're new to my website or new to my YouTube channel, please go to my website, click this link. You'll notice that I I've, I've spent some more time. The newest edition of my book, September 26th, that was yesterday. All that information, specific information about the last days. And please, you want to get ready for Jesus Christ. It's not Barack Obama. You want to get ready for the real Jesus Christ. And if you're not going to get ready for the real Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. If you're not with Christ, you're against him. And if you're not with Christ, you're getting ready for the Antichrist. 
and that is the worst position you can ever be in. And so I'm, I'm asking you today, consider the news that the Lord has shown you. All of these things, consider them because the Lord is calling you to his salvation. Pay attention to his signs because they're right in front of us. God bless you all. This is Frank DeMora.